than to you none other than Reverend Robert Hughes. Amen. Here you he is. Preach, Amen. son. Preach. Thank you. Good evening. Good, good evening. evening. Uh, it is good to be here with Pastor Caldwell, Amen. Reverend Love, and the entire family that's here with us today. Amen. I just want to uh, start off. I know that the time is ticking, uh, but you know I, I appreciate songs. Uh, mm -hmm. Songs has a way of bringing people together. Amen. And we came together tonight so we can praise God, so mm -hmm. we can be informed, so we can be inspired, mm -hmm. and so we can also, what's the last end? Be involved. Be involved. Be involved. Be involved. And Amen. so I need your involvement right now. All right. And so with that, I'm just going to ask you to stand quickly, yes. and we're just going to sing one verse of I need you, yeah. you need me. All right. We're all a part of God's body. All right. Stand with me. Yeah. Agree with me. All right. I need you to survive. Yeah. If you know that song, yeah. let's start it up. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that You are important to me. I need you to survive. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Yeah. God has placed us here to be yeah. in community. Yeah. To be here together. I need you. You mm -hmm. need me. We are all a part of God's body. Amen. And I appreciate you standing with me today. Yes, sir. Amen. We'd like to start off. In a word of prayer. Yeah. Amen. And I ask that you will bow down with me. Yeah. O God who art in heaven, mm -hmm. hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. We thank you, O God, for allowing us to make it into the house of God this evening. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for this place of grace, mm -hmm. community fellowship. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that we will continue to experience your goodness, your grace, your love, your justice, O God. Yes. Lord, we pray that you will give us the mind to do a mind to act, and a mind to go. Mm -hmm. Lord, allow for your words to go forward this day. Yes. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart yes. be acceptable in thy sight. Yes. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Let me ask you a quick question. How many of you have camera phones with you today? If you have one, let's see you raise it up. If your phone has, you have a camera phone. And I just ask you quickly, this is interactive. I'll ask you some questions, hopefully you will answer. What type of pictures do you take with your camera phone? Pictures. Pictures. Right. If we looked at your camera, what, what will we see? Pictures of my kids. We see pictures of kids, we see pictures of family. We see pictures of some family. We uh -huh. see pictures in all types of situations. Now, if you show those to us, would you be excited to, to show those pictures oh, to yeah, us? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Or with some of those pictures, uh, we wouldn't be able to see. <laughs> uh, I believe that you know, there's a difference between how we act in public. All right. And there's also a difference of how we act in private. All right. And I think some of the pictures that we have on our own phones will tell that story. Wow. And today we want to talk a little bit about, first thing we talked about was public policy. Right. And today I want to share a little bit in the way of public theology. Yes. Does anyone know what public theology means? Public religion. Mm -hmm. Let's break it down. Public means uh, means everybody yeah. out in the open. Mm -hmm. Theology means talk about God. God. Means religion. Study. Talking Study. About, Study. God. about God. So public theology, putting it together, would be open, religion. open, open talking about God. Open and talking about God. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about how Jesus practiced a public theology. All right. I'm going to use a scripture that's coming out of the book of Luke, yes. looking at chapter 18, and I'm going to read to you verses 35 through 43. And if you could stop the time for a quick moment, I'm going to go ahead and read, and then you can restart me again. But the Bible says, as he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Uh -huh. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. 
They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. All right. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, yeah. have mercy on me. Yeah. Amen. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. All right. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Amen. Immediately. Everyone say immediately. immediately. He regained his sight yes. and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, praised God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And for a subject today, I just want to share a few moments with you on the subject of oh say can you see all right, all right. oh say can you see Are any, is anyone familiar with oh say can you see <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what is uh the beginning of oh say can you see by the dawn by the dawn early lights what, what's the name of the song that that comes out of the star spangled banner amen so we got that covered so the body of christ is under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when we read these biblical stories such as we just did, we get a snapshot of what life was like during the time of Jesus, much mm -hmm. like within our camera phones. Mm -hmm. This is the time in which Jesus, the Son of God, lived on earth. Mm -hmm. And as we read these stories, we learn a little bit about Jesus' character, who he was and his qualities. So we see that on your phone as well. All right. This is important for us to believe as believers because in the body of Christ, we all have Christ-like character, or we're striving to have Christ-like character. We're striving to represent and be the body of Christ in this world. We need to represent the body of Christ to all people in the world. Amen. I'm going to ask you one question. How many of us in this house tonight are aware that as a community, we are in desperate need of some sight? Amen. Would you agree that we're in oh, desperate amen. need amen. of some sight? Yeah. Amen. Oh, say, can you see? Mm -hmm. We desire a clear path to know where it is that God would have for us to be All right. as members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, if I can speak with you continually for a few moments, I want you to remember, oh, say, can you see? All right. We've already shared that this is the beginning of one of the most revered and patriotic songs in American history called the Star Spangled Banner. I ask you again, oh, say, can you see? That God is always with us. All right. Even if we feel that we have lost something. Mm -hmm. In the scripture we learn that the blind man took direct action in several ways. Mm -hmm. That allowed for him to receive the blessing of restoring his sight. All right. He asked the question. Jesus asked him the question. What would you have for me to do? Mm -hmm. And he said oh if I could just see again. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh say can you see? Mm -hmm. It is our faith. That allows our eyes to be open to see in the spirit and in truth the world around us. Mm -hmm. And how are we to engage this world? How are we to deal with our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, our family when we're on the job? Mm -hmm. For we walk by faith Amen. and not by, by sight. Amen. Oh say can you see? Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, he wrote in the book of Hebrews in chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. It was by our faith mm -hmm. that our grandfathers and our grandmothers, mm -hmm. our aunts and our uncles, mm -hmm. our moms, our dads, our sisters and our brothers, our cousins, our ancestors received approval. And it was by faith that we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. Amen. And so that what is seen was made from things that were not visible Amen. or were not seen. Yeah. But I ask you the question again, oh, say, can you see? Mm -hmm. For time would fail me to tell you more about the stories of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah or David and Samson and Samuel and the prophets who, through their faith, 
They did several things. They conquered kingdoms. Amen. They administered justice. Amen. They obtained promises. Mm -hmm. They shut the mouths of lions. Mm -hmm. They quenched raging fire. Well, they escaped the edge of the sword. Yes, they won strength out of weakness. Yes, they became mighty in war. Yeah. And they put foreign armies to flight. Right. Mm -hmm. But oh, can okay, you see? Mm -hmm. Oh, say, can you see? I can't even say it. Oh. But oh, say, can you see? Yeah. By faith. That we as the African American church, well, the people of this house, mm -hmm. have worked to prepare people in the face of racism, well, in the face of classism, yes, sir. in all forms of types of discrimination that we choose to use the vote against. Mm -hmm. all right. In spite of those efforts of others who would try to not allow for us to see, mm -hmm. within our history we have created banks. Well, we have created credit unions. Yeah. We have created insurance companies. Yeah. We have created real estate development firms. Mm -hmm. We have started floral shops, mm -hmm. colleges, universities, mm -hmm. accounting firms, urban gardens, food co-ops, as we have here, and also places of worship, just to name a few. Amen. We have the ability to see. Mm -hmm. And I ask you again, oh, say, can you see? Mm -hmm. As we continue to redeem, rebuild, renew, and restore, let us take a look at Jesus the Christ, well, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, mm -hmm. who for the sake of the joy mm -hmm. that was set, set before him yeah. mm -hmm. endured the cross. Yes. Well, a couple points about the direct action that we see in the text that mm -hmm. the blind man, mm -hmm. the gentleman was blind, but he had some things that he could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was blind, yes, but he heard a crowd going by. So that meant what? He that he could hear. Mm -hmm. He asked what was happening. Mm -hmm. And that meant what? He that he could speak. Mm -hmm. He shouted. Mm -hmm. And he got the attention. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jesus, mm -hmm. son of David, yeah. have mercy yeah. on me. Well, yeah. And then what else did he do? He shouted even more loudly. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? <clears throat> he got Jesus' attention. Yes. Amen. And Jesus stopped. Mm -hmm. Stood still mm -hmm. well, and he asked what? What can I do? What can I do for you? He said, Come here, mm -hmm. and what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. So in his coming near, he did what? He walked over to Jesus. So the ability to walk meant that he was he was able to walk. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so he asked the question, Lord help me to see again. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we learn a couple of things. Right. Mm -hmm. We learn just because he was blind doesn't mean that he was without mm -hmm. any other abilities. Right. So he used what he had to get what he used to have. Yeah. Because the text says that he could see before. Mm -hmm. Because the question that he asked was, Lord, allow for me to see again. All right. So he had the ability to see before, but something happened in All his right. life right. that allowed him not to be able to see. All right. yeah. But he remembered how good it was well, to be able to see. Yeah. So when he saw, he didn't know that Jesus was coming that way. All right. Much like when we represent the body of Christ and we go out to different places, people may not know that we are coming that way. Yeah. But this blind man teaches us something. Mm -hmm. The blind man teaches us to be prepared. Mm -hmm. All right. Because Jesus asked him a question. Mm -hmm. And when he asked him the question, he had something to say. Yeah. He knew what to ask for. Yeah. I asked you today, mm -hmm. oh, say, can you see? Mm -hmm. And if Jesus was to stop you today, yeah. well, would you know what to ask for? All right. All right. And in asking that, we're talking about information. We're talking about inspiration. And we're talking about the final end. Involvement. Involvement. You got to play your part. Amen. I'm going to move on because I know that the time is limited. Amen. But I would like for us to know that many of us found Jesus for ourselves. That's right. Amen. When we were on the road side of life, mm -hmm. maybe that was along Peachtree Road or mm -hmm. Auburn Avenue or Cascade, mm -hmm. Campbellton, or maybe even here on Wendell Drive. Well. And many, if not all of us, have been blind, deaf, mute, mm -hmm. or out of touch at some point in our life. All right. But oh, Thank God for amazing grace. Yeah, How sweet the sound. Yeah. I once was lost, mm -hmm. but now I was found. Yeah. I was blind, yeah. but now I see. Oh, say, can, can you see? see? Yeah. In my growth and development as a Christian, mm -hmm. and in general, and we talked about it a little earlier, as being a public theologian or wanting to display my faith in public. Mm -hmm. Public theology to me is a public demonstration of God's power mm -hmm. through the lives of those who believe they are 
guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right? There's a scholar by the name of O'Berry Hendricks who simply says that treating the people and their needs as holy mm -hmm. should be the perspective of everyone who purports or whose desires or who says that they are to be a lover of God and humanity. Mm -hmm. well, but it must certainly be the perspective of every religious and political leader who claims to follow Jesus. Yeah. There must only be servant leaders. Mm -hmm. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, uh -huh, but to serve. But to serve. Yeah. Amen. Wants to know that in Jesus, mm -hmm. he did a couple of things. Mm -hmm. He navigated the Jewish community to carry out his public ministry. Yeah. He gave us an example of what it means to go about and live on this earth and to profess our Lord and Savior and the power of the Holy Spirit right. publicly. Mm -hmm. For me, that's public theology. That's what Jesus is teaching and calling us to do when we go out to vote and we exercise our voice. Yeah. Oh, say, can you see? Yeah. God has allowed me to come into relationship with Jesus the Christ as my Lord and Savior and wants to put my faith into action. Amen. Jesus leaves us with two great commandments. He all says, right. love the Lord our God mm -hmm. with all my heart, mm -hmm. soul, and mind. Yes. And then he also said another one. He said, love, love my neighbor yeah. as myself. Yeah. Amen. And I could not find a better example in the Bible mm -hmm. that would talk about public theology where we can honor God and our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Where we're called to be what's called proactive citizens. We're not sitting back waiting for life to happen to us, but right. we're involved. We're engaged, yeah. we're informed, right. we're inspired, mm -hmm. and involved. involved. Yeah. And so with that, it teaches us about what are we motivated by? Mm -hmm. Well, as believers, we're motivated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. And it came to me to understand that the Holy Spirit represents community. Mm -hmm. Because if the Holy Spirit resides in you, mm -hmm. then you no longer choose what you want to do. All right. You have to have a conversation mm -hmm. within yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to decide if you're going to do what you want to do mm -hmm. or are you going to do what the Holy Spirit will want you to do. Yeah. And so this is the process of seeing outside of yourself mm -hmm. and right. being submitted to some power that is greater within us mm -hmm. so we can make the proper choices to be able to be involved in the lives of other people because it's tough to serve others. Yeah. It's difficult to serve others. Yeah. But with that, we have that responsibility as Christians. That's so right. the two greatest commandments, they do a couple of things, but most importantly, they allow for us to be free. Amen. They free us to live in such a way where the Lord intended us to live mm -hmm. on earth mm -hmm. as citizens, mm -hmm. not of earth, mm -hmm. but of the kingdom of God right. on earth Amen. as it is in heaven. And yeah. I'm going to go a little slower here because I want to talk a little bit because we were talking about voter registration. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that there is a difference mm -hmm. between being a member and being a citizen. All right. When we talk about church membership, mm -hmm. it brings forward being consumers. Mm -hmm. It brings forth a consumer mindset. Mm -hmm. Some like a gym membership. Mm -hmm. Or like, how many of you have, uh, I don't have my keys with me, but uh, some of you have those grocery club yeah, cards yeah, on your keys. Yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, you go to the grocery club store and you, know, you scan your card a little bit and you might get like, 35 cents off or something like that. Yeah. But you keep it with you right. because yeah. you're part of the club. So you got membership there. Right. And sometimes you may have paid for that and sometimes you may have not. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, it brings a consumer mindset. Mm -hmm. right. But God has called for us to be productive yeah. citizens. All right. And in being a productive citizen, that means that we are a resident. Mm -hmm. It means that we are in a healthy relationship with the body of Christ. Yes. And it also means that being a member of the body of Christ allows for us to be citizens, which is a public force, mm -hmm. as the body of Christ bringing forward the kingdom of God. Amen. We must be intentional about how we use our language, mm -hmm. how we describe each other. Mm -hmm. Because in being kingdom citizens, that means that we have some ownership. Mm -hmm. And in that, that means that we have some responsibility. And so as believers, as kingdom citizens, and part of the kingdom of God, we have a public responsibility to be able to carry out God's work on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So as citizens, 
As disciples of Jesus Christ, we have all been commissioned as given by the scripture of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verse 19. They simply said to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And this is a public theology that calls us to speak and interact with all types of people, yeah. non-Jews as well as Jews, well, people of all faiths, mm -hmm. people of all races, mm -hmm. people of all backgrounds, well, people of all classes, mm -hmm. a public theology that moves us with compassion all right. to care for others as citizens. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us a few more things. The Bible says, then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father. Hungry, and you gave me food. Well, mm -hmm. I was thirsty, mm -hmm. and you gave me something to drink. Yes. I was a stranger, mm -hmm. and you welcomed me. Yes. I was naked, mm -hmm. and you gave me clothing. Yes. I was sick, mm -hmm. and you took care of me. Mm -hmm. I was in prison, and you visited me. Yes. This, my friends, is a public theology. Amen. And this public theology results in some very direct public actions. Amen. I can imagine the challenges that this blind man faced mm -hmm. reflecting on the days of his youth gone by. Mm -hmm. The text says again, he asked Jesus, Lord, let me see again. Yeah. When God has given you sight, mm -hmm. and that sight has led to the impartation of vision, well. and you have pursued such a sight, glorious, illuminating sight, much like promised land. Mm -hmm. And then along the way, the days get long. Mm -hmm. The nights get a little cold. Yeah. And the night seems to creep in a little bit on your dreams. Mm -hmm. And these are dreams yet to be realized. Mm -hmm. How many of you may have some dreams that have gone unfulfilled? Mm -hmm. And one setback occurred after another. Mm -hmm. One after another. Maybe it was illness. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was death. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was some addiction. Maybe it's financial troubles. Well, Maybe it was foreclosure. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was divorce. Mm -hmm. One thing after the next in this life can dim your sight mm -hmm. and eventually can bring some blindness. Right. Putting yourself in a position where you are living life under the cover of darkness. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful tonight Amen. for this reformed blind man Amen. Oh, say, can you see? Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for his perseverance. Amen. I'm thankful for his willingness to press through. Well. And I'm thankful for his willingness to receive a God-given blessing. Yeah. He was shouting loud enough that my Lord and Savior chose to stand still and hear the cry of this blind man. Yeah. The songwriter says, I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. He heard my cry yeah. and he pitied every yeah. groan. Yeah. Long as I live. Yeah. And troubles rise. Yeah. I hasten to his throne. Yeah. And when the blind man came near, Jesus asked him again, What do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, let me see again. And well, this is where we get excited and celebrate again. Because at this time, mm -hmm. we can be free. Yeah. We can be free of those financial worries. Well, we can be free of those addictions. Yeah. We can be free of those challenges of divorce. Yeah. We can be free of those things that call us illness. Yeah. We can be free of all those things that seek to keep us bound yeah. and without the light. Amen. And so with that, I say, oh, say, can you see? Amen. And give thanks to the Lord mm -hmm. for his mercy is good yeah. and his mercy endures forever. And so with that, through voting, mm -hmm. we have the power to do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I would challenge you, Amen. because it's just one pull, one lever of an entire political process. Amen. It's just the beginning. Amen. It's just the start. Amen. We have to move in our lives to full engagement as full citizens. Amen. We have some rights and responsibilities that we're not even using. Yeah. And we're walking around blind. Lord. So I challenge us. Oh, say, can you see? There's things that you have in your possession, like the blind man had, the ability to walk, the ability to talk, the ability to hear. Mm -hmm. 
You have some things in your possession. I don't want to leave here tonight without you knowing that you have those things in your possession. I know I'm over my time and, you know, I don't have any hoop or clothes or anything like that. But I just want to share a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word of inspiration to everyone that decided to come out here tonight. Because you being here is not by accident. You came to be inspired. You came to be informed. You came to be involved. And those are good things. And so it starts there. It starts at the beginning. And I just do want to share, because I think it is appropriate, that if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, if you have had some things in your life that have caused you to be blind, that's a good word, preacher. To cause you to not see as clearly as you once did, maybe in the days of your youth. Mm -hmm. Those dreams that you still have that are unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. Those things that you thought that you could never possibly be able to see again. Mm -hmm. It's time to see again. It's time to see again. Don't say, can you see? I'm just going to ask that you stand with me. And I'm going to turn this over to the pastor of this house. And I think it is appropriate to open up an invitation. Uh, If 